guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and you are joining us today from my studio um, in North Carolina, outside of Raleigh, uh, just filming from the home studio. If you haven't caught up with us yet doing any of these, we've been doing them now for several weeks. So, um, and I'm filming besides live, I'm filming on Sundays and on Thursdays at the same time as live. So a little extra added excitement of content. Um, the regular um, Jerry's Live ones though are listed as always on our website, jerrysartorama.com. You can type in keyword Jerry's Live that will show you the upcoming episodes that we've got. Now um, we are doing um, next week exploring alcohol inks, the week after we're doing, doing linoleum block printing, and then after that we're going to do a kit with um, with watercolor pencils, and it's a little travel kit that I decided that we should do. Um, we'll do watercolor pencils with um, postcards. There's a little set of postcards that comes with it because, you know, doing art, maybe sending it to some friends to cheer them up with being stuck at home might be a really cool, fun thing. So um, that will be uh, JL149. So, uh, we are doing today a soft pastel paint along with everybody. Um, this episode is JL146. If you're wanting to see what items we have um, on the website that are this kit, it's very small, only four items. So um, I've got it all set up over here and we'll get started on it in just a minute. Now we are doing continual um, contest each week something new each week, a new, a new prompt. Um, this week was painting, uh, doing basically like suburban artwork, um, painting, drawing your surroundings, whether it's uh, the tree outside your window, whether it's you know the empty street, whether it's pets playing in the yard, anything. Um, just kind of documenting the area around you and kind of what's going on and making sure you're getting out and getting a little bit of fresh air. So. Um, at the end of this show, we will have those winners. So they've been picked. I just need the final list of names and a drum roll for the end. So um, anyway, I've got our, our stuff all set up over here. Um, we're going to I've got the put the artwork in the Jerry's Live Facebook group. So if you don't have the picture, it's there if you need to pull it up uh, to work along with this. And feel free to work along with this even if you don't have the set. If you've got some pastels or other things, it doesn't matter, we're just here to work together and have some fun, okay? So I'm going to turn this around in just a second. Um, I will not see the comments this time because I've got a tripod up higher so you guys have a little bit better view of, um, of the, the board that I'm working at where you can see the reference photo, you can see the supplies and all that. So um, so if there's anything important, you will just have to text me and I'll hopefully catch it. So um, anyway, you ready to go? Um, I'm going to very carefully try to put this on the tripod. All right. So let me stick this up here without turning everything all off. Give me a minute. It's going to be a little bit bumpy. But I thought this was the best way to get everything in here. Let's see if I can pull up the comments on my... Um, on my iPad. All right, so we've got our um, reference photo right there. Let's pop this over just a tiny bit. Get that all in there. All right. Okay. I've got us over here, so we're good to go. Um, let me see if I can get this where I can see comments as they come along. Um, I don't know. <laughs> there we go. All right. Got it. Okay. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, they've got some decent weather there. We've had, it's been 80 degrees today. So uh, needless to say, I've been inside for the most part. Um, and it looks like it's going to rain. So... Um, all right, so we've got the Mungio Soft Pastel Kit. It's just a little 32 half sticks. I've got an extra kit here in case I need any others. 
So it's a great way to get started in a medium without really having to make an investment in a big set or um, full sticks. It The big deal with kind of trying to do soft pastels is that you really, the more colors you've got, the better, right? So starting out with a set of 12 really doesn't cut the mustard. So this is a fantastic way for very, very ridiculously inexpensive to get yourself some colors to play with without breaking the bank to see if soft pastels might be something that's for you. Okay, so they come in just that little sleeve, um, super easy to use, but super portable and it's very padded. Okay, we're doing uh, the Creative Mark Complete Charcoal and Blending uh, Pastel Blending Set. Um, it's got a sanding pad here uh, that's how you get an, a nice hard edge if you need it for your pastels. Um, it's how you can round something out if you want it more rounded. Uh, it's also how you can take these stomps and actually uh, sand the color off to be able to um, get more use out of it so you're not transferring color, um, either the stomps or the tortillions. So, um, and then it's got two little kind of almost like makeup applicator sponges there. Um, that you can also kind of apply little touches of color to it. So I'm going to open this up. I apologize that it's going to sound kind of noisy, but it looks so pretty in the package, and I thought it would be easier to see um, see it as it was than when it's suddenly in a giant jumble on the work table. All right. So I've got those all here. Kind of space them out so I've got what's what and that sanding pad I'm gonna pull that top thing off so in case I do need to this comes some people will use that it's just a little protective thing this is really just sandpaper on a little hardboard uh, with a hook you can stick it on okay and then if you need to clean it off you just take it off like that all right these are just paper rolls all right so we've got those then the next thing we've got is the Fabriano color drawing paper. It's called a Pache. And this is Tiziano, okay? If you've ever worked with the Canson My Taints, this is Fabriano's version of that. It's a decent weight, 98 pounds, so it's very durable for even colored pencil work and things like that. Um, and this, excuse the front, because this looks kind of crafty and cartoony. It's, it's really amazing paper and this is where we did the uh the color um for just taking a picture for the um advertising the show but you can see the pastel takes really nicely it's got a smoother side on one side and a more textured side on the other now when you're working with this this has 12 different colors so if you got the set for yourself you've got that you've got um this really beautiful kind of daffodil yellow uh, orange, red, kind of a, a red violet, really deep red violet, black for some pop. Uh, you've got a lavender, a really screaming cobalt blue, green, um, like more of a neutral tan and a neutral green. It's a lot of different sheets in here. Oh, and a brown too, hiding. So there's a whole variety of colors. If you're somebody that likes to play it safe with those kind of softer, more neutral tones, you can go with that or you can go with something really bright like the blue. So um, so we've got some choice, guys. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take my paper here in a minute. Now you can see these colors, they're gonna look, you know, your bright ones are gonna look really bright on this dark color. But your darks are going to really fade kind of in more of those those blues won't have that kind of pretty pop the light ones will uh, but those darker ones won't so you have to kind of decide you know what what goes good with this and I'm gonna hold up each of these so you can kind of look at I want everybody to pick what if you bought this little set to this pick the color that you want Do you want to kind of play it safe do you want to be braver and it'd be really awesome if you guys would share these in the the Jerry's live um, Facebook group. I'm obviously not going to use this one. I have another piece. I've got two sets of this just in case I needed something, but we'll just use this for now. Um, so that that would be nice. Those bright colors would pop, but I don't know if it's it would be kind of wasting a lot of paper because sometimes the nice thing about using colored paper is you can use it for some of kind of 
um, kind of the neutral tone or some of the body of the work where you actually don't have to put anything down. So I don't think I'm going to use that one. Yellow, that would be nice. Then we could just put some of those other colors on and leave kind of some of the, it's almost that same, it's, it's a little bit kind of a lighter value slightly, but that would be a nice choice. Um, if we wanted to do that now, when we put the blue on, it might not show up as much because remember, you're going to have some pops of that color through it. So it might not be with, with that kind of lighter blue, the value might not be quite what, you know, if, if I want it to be more of a difference. That would be kind of nice in some ways because you could put your yellows and greens on that. It would be bright and orange is your complement of blue. So that would really make any blue that I add to this super electric. Um, red, that red would be nice played off of that, but I don't know if I would want to use that. And I don't think that would look as nice with the blue for this picture. So I'm going to put that over here. Let me turn this blue over so I don't get pastel transfer on everything. Violet, although that's not in any of that, that would be very different because you could use that kind of for some of those darker colors, right? that you've got in there um, to play off of kind of your shadows and things like that. I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I, it's not as exciting to me. So we're going to move on. Black, if you wanted to do something very, very modern, that could look really awesome. Um, and I actually kind of, kind of like that. And I'd be drawn to that with the stem and stuff. Um, but I think for you guys to be able to see more, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me. So I will not do what I would probably want to do. Lavender. I think I would pick a different subject matter for this. It's a beautiful piece of paper. Um, but I think I would pick something softer and more kind of feminine uh, subject matter. Um, so not, not my choice. All right. That's a nice standout. I, I don't know if this blue would kind of look as nice with that lighter blue, but it might work. Um, just playing off kind of the oranges in the pear. Um, I think I'm going to keep going because I really like both of these. Now that would be fun. Look how nice that is with the green bottom of the... And, and I know this seems silly, but holding this up to your work is a really easy way of saving yourself some time and effort when you're working because if it's got that for part of your undervalues or or shadows or some of the main body of your subject matter it can really work nicely. So I'm going to leave this over here. I still haven't decided. Brown. I think if the background was different, that would be nice kind of fall colors. Not really what I like. If I wanted to play it safe, if you guys want to play it safe at home, if you're a little scared, if this is a little intimidating, this might be a nice color um, or even this, because that's got some of your color of your fruit in there. Um, and that will really make anything dark that you add pop, pop big time. So these are the colors I'm left with. Now I can kind of see some of the comments. So if anybody wants to weigh in, so we've got our green, really like that. We've got our orange and we've got that yellow. So it's, it's all kind of what you guys think. I see people weighing in on orange. I'm going to give it one more minute um, while I get the other stuff out. Somebody says green. <laughs> Yellow. You guys are killing me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Other people said orange. We're doing orange. We're doing orange. Okay. I, I think probably if it was me... I would do the green. I like that green. The yellow is really nice too, but the orange, that play of the complementaries, I think is what we're going to go with. So, all right. So you can use any type of tape. This is just uh, an artist tape that's on neutral pH um, that, that comes up pretty easily. Um, I'm going to tape this over here and hopefully I'm not going to bump the camera too much for you guys. Actually, since we can see all the way to that edge, I'm going to tape it right here. I'm just going to put just a tiny bit on that edge. I really don't. I'm putting the more textured side out because I like the more textured side. I don't want to touch this a lot because I don't want to transfer oils from my hand. 
hopefully this will help us kind of with the focus. I appreciate that you guys are very patient with, I know Facebook can be kind of, depending on what it's running at, not as, uh, not as crisp and bright for our detail. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in just a little. No, I didn't want to do it. I think we're good with this. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got just some uh, makeup wipes over here because I tend to get a lot of pastel on me when I work. So it's just going to make sure that I don't get some on my hands and that to then transfer on the paper. Um, and then um, I do have some sticks. I'm not a big fan and it's just me. It's not, not anything other than that. Not a big fan of using it, but we're going to try it some with it to show you guys how it works. Um, I think with this, I'm not, I tend to use the tortillions, which are the little kind of shorter, stumpier, um, hollow, uh, pieces. I tend to use this with pencil, uh, because the graphite's a little, a little kind of smoother with the paper. It, these seem to work a little better. These are very soft. So I'm going to use these if, and when I, I go to use these the blending stumps um, or we might even give these little this little thingy a try if there's something I want to soften I might kind of push and pull with that sponge as well um, oh and in the in the pack there is this there's a kneaded eraser okay I'm just gonna go ahead and get that ready it's great for lifting things I kind of keep one piece where I can kind of push and lift with the tack of it to just pick it pick it up without be, um, getting again the oils of your hand on there or trying to lift it with the sponge or something like that where you could transfer and then with the back area you can make it where you can pick up larger areas okay now if you were doing this where you're wanting to really get into pastels for yourself this is at an angle where it's leaning back for demonstration because of how it's easiest to film this it needs to be upright like this for you guys um, what I really recommend if you want to get into pastels is a drawing board or drawing table or even an easel. And a lot of the, even the, the less expensive student um, style easels, when you buy an easel, always check to see what it'll do. Will it lean forward? Will it lean back? Just to help kind of get glare off your work because of light. But it's also, you want it to tilt forward slightly so that Pastels will dust and you'll see this as we're working just because of the nature of the medium because of that clay in it It's gonna kind of run and pull down this if I was working here in pastels I've got two different easels that will lean forward just slightly and what that does is kind of keeps the pastel falling off um, So that it's not kind of dusting itself on my, on my paper um, I would also with that make a little sleeve kind of where the tape is out on the surface uh, with that easel to grab it. So if I'm going to be working a lot, it'll grab excess dust. I do have a vacuum though because I'm so maniacal about pastel dust that will filter out literally everything. Um, so it's it's not as important for me to do that here in my studio because I will vacuum it up right away because I just don't want the pets tracking dust everywhere and and I've got a working studio with dogs, so it's everywhere. And I don't want the bird getting it. So, um, all right. So we've got this. I may move this down if, if this starts kind of being difficult to get these in and out. What we're going to do first is we're going to pick kind of where our pair is going to be. Now, you don't. Ha you can do it vertically if you want. If you've got this at home, just fold it where you want that edge to be. And you can do it vertically if you want to do it vertically and place it higher, lower, whatever i'm doing this because it's a nice third third here right so compositionally it's nice because it's a third over here and then one two it's a third down here with that shadow so it's a very very simple composition that you don't have to think about when you're learning something so that's why i thought that this would be kind of ideal to do now i'm going to take a more neutral color that i know should hide now, when if you, this Pache uh, pack of paper makes it a little more difficult when you buy paper, buy multiples of the same color so you can have a scrap piece. You can see that's pretty hard to see there. Um, so I'm going to use that for my drawing 
it's it's kind of a almost an ochre looking there's a lighter one but I think it would be a little too light value wise to do my drawing so I'm just gonna figure out where my pair is gonna be so a third a third I'm gonna draw a line through so I can see kind of where my top to bottom is gonna be with that pair um, it won't come up this high all right then I'm gonna kind of round that out it's bigger at the bottom and I'm gonna work right up to the edge when I do this okay we're not worried about this being perfect I know everybody's like ah, no. this doesn't have to be perfect right now as we paint it in we can pull and push and cover to kind of get rid of parts we don't like so the same for the stem I'm gonna take a little bit darker color but I want to see and the stems nice on this I picked a picture that would be easy for you guys so you don't have to put that stem in where it's um, you know sunken and you can see the sides of the fruit it's pretty easy it's just sitting right on top there okay um, now um, with that since it's so dark I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that color in very lightly okay and somebody's asking if I'm left-handed yes I am that's why we've got this set up this way so it's easier for you guys to kind of see in between okay um we've got kind of that pear edge I'm gonna darken it just a little bit more with with this just to see if you guys can see it a little better I just don't want that heavier kind of outline I'm using just drawing with the corner of that pastel okay now if you didn't know that we were doing this and you didn't know that we had a set the set's super reasonable I think it's 23 or 24 dollars and there's a code you can use that gives you free shipping that's live capitals L-I-V-E 146 which is this episode so that you can get that set for on the super cheap to be able to try and have some fun with all right so um, value wise that's a little bit darker than that shadow but I can come back in with a lighter blue pastel so I want to just kind of cement where my shadow is for that pair I'm gonna take it and turn it on its side okay I'm gonna make it a little bit wider than what they've got and notice how that green looks very different on that orange it's very bright I think I'm gonna come back in with an evergreen that's next to it um, hopefully yeah you guys can see which which one I'm reaching for and just give it a little bit right there and then go in deep right underneath alright so it's pastel safer it's okay so we've got our shadow we've got our fruit so that you can find that fruit I'm gonna go with a slightly darker the darker of the two light pastels and I'm gonna come around it so we can see it because the easiest way with this is to work from dark to light because they will lay over each other um, and not light to dark because then it's it's a little hard to hear sorry April is yelling for or you know you always know which dog is the naughty dog when the bird knows its name so she's yelling for Vido. Okay. Waldo is in his crate he's taking a nap mm -hmm. okay I've just got that turned on its side using that point to kind of chisel around it doing this so you guys can really see where that pair is a little bit easier okay
April is a huge art critic. Don't ask April if she likes your work. April, do you not like the sound? It's okay. All right. So the trick is reaching over here. I'm going to use it on the other side where it's got a little edge still. And I'm sorry I'm blocking this. Just got it straight on the edge like this. Just using that edge right there. And kind of the point to find where I want the side of my pair to be. And my pair is taller and thinner than the original pair, but we're not really worried about that. We're just worried about dealing with the medium today. Okay, now that I've got that, I was worried I might miss the... It's hard not being over this. Okay. Let me go in a little bit harder. Kind of like the orange out here, so I think I'm going to let some of that show through. And hopefully some of you guys use some different paper colors so we can kind of see what your choices are. And the, the pastel use that you guys do, the colors that you pick, may differ based on um, the selections. All right, so see what I was talking about, blue hands. So I'm gonna wipe that, hold on, I'm gonna blow this real quick, just to keep it from going down the side of my work. All right, so now we can see our, our pair. I'm there. All right. So let's get some color on the pear, and then we'll come in with the stem in just a minute. All right. And yeah, my hands are sticky. Okay. Um. We don't really. Oh, that'll show up a little. Okay. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna go. Actually, let's do let's do the green first. There's not a super light green. So let's do this, the lightest green that there is. It's close. Um, I'm going to sweep under the bottom because we can come back in with that yellow pastel. Kind of paying attention to not coming up higher than where that kind of is on the pair. Draw that on a little harder. Okay, tiny touch of it up here. Sorry guys, I hope I'm not getting my head in the way. No, don't look like I am. Okay. All right, so we've got some of that on there. Um, then let's go with a little bit of kind of that yellow. Wipe my hands again. I'm gonna go with more the golden kind of Sunflower yellow first here, and then we'll come back in with the, this is where I'm going to start pushing a little bit harder, okay, because I really want to, some of this to show up, to pop. Okay. Kind of finding that edge and blending that onto that green to lighten it some. See how that really lightens that quite a bit. Okay. Over there. And then I think I'm going to leave the rest. Okay. All right. So you can see that starting to show up over that orange. See how that orange really helped us with some of these kind of undertones that are under that? 
Chloe to have a bunch of stuff. All right, so I'm going to go with the next darker orange, which is almost the same color as the paper, just slightly lighter. I'm just going to trace in the middle a little bit right there. And a little where that white is going to go, kind of where the highlight's going to go, just so it'll have something other than that blended into the paper. Okay, so it will grab on top of that. Now I'm going to go that next darker orange. Although I really don't see that, I really see red next. Um, so let's let's skip that. Go to that next red, and this is a little bit lighter. We're going to use that, and then we're going to come back in with this brown here. Okay, because I do want a little bit of brightness. So, and with this, I'm just barely, I'm going to kind of ease it hatching, okay? I'm making lines really gently, hatching it into that green. It gets browner because those the, are the color complements, right? I just, I want to control it a little bit, so I'm using a little bit of hatching. Okay. And there's just a touch up here at the top of some red. I'm going to go over here. There's kind of this light brown. It looks like some of kind of that area of red there. Okay, I'm switching hands and I do this sometimes with pastel. I don't know because it's a little bit more like sculpture. I will use it like more like a sculpture tool. But that just means double the hand wiping. Okay, um, going in with kind of that terracotta color. Uh, with this, I'm going to be bad. I'm breaking up. Ugh, maybe I'm not. <laughs> ah! Okay. 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 Now we're going to come back. See a little bit on that outside edge. Got a nice sharp edge where that where I just snapped that. So that'll work. Okay, now I can take uh, it's pretty close value-wise. Now these aren't perfect because they're not the same, um, you know, it's not a really as full of a natural kind of complement as a larger set would be of some of the greens and stuff. So we're making do with these values, okay? So I'm just lightly kind of putting that over that. All right. So that's got kind of that undertone of shadow. All right, I'm going to take one of these stomps. I'm going to take the number three. I'm just going to see how this works. I've not used these on. I'm just going to very gently. See, that almost dusts it off. It's getting a nice blend to it. I think it's... I'm pushing harder in the shadow. I want to see what this will do. Okay, that works really well where you've applied heavier. Let's pull it across. I'm going to scrub it into the paper texture. to get that super 
deeper shadow that we've got kind of going over there and see how it's got it on there I mean I'm using that transfer to bring it out over here where there's that little bit of line I'm just blending it right into that blue now see where this orange edge is I really like that I'm gonna leave that I know it's not like that there but it's kind of a nice powerful thing all right so let's work with some of the lighter yellow now that we've got kind of some of this going on here because then once we get our highlights and we can kind of see do we need to make this darker or not value wise we probably do but I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna try this first and we'll see how much lighter this might get okay the edge is a lot brighter just kind of feeling where that is and pushing in those little spots it's it's not it's rounded just slightly I'm gonna take the harder edge Okay, so that little bit brighter. There's not really that, maybe right across the top here. Okay, it's much darker over here. This is the light side, the dark side. All right, let's try taking a little bit of white where we want those highlights to be. Actually, let's do the stem first. I'm going to pick that darkest brown out. So I'm going to see these are our darkest darks. Taking that point and really scrubbing it into the paper to get that fill. a little too dark we're gonna come back in with some red in just a minute I'm kind of tentative about that because I just don't want to overdo it but we're gonna need it I think um, let's see how dark this is all right so I'm going in with the next darkest dark it's not black it's almost like a sepia okay I'm gonna add a little bit of that down here. See how that kind of grounds that out? Okay, and then I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna keep that. There's a really dark blue in it. I'm gonna go in and put that to kind of blend it in with it. Since we're doing this kind of orange and blue, almost complementary colors with the with your blue background and then with your um, shadows and stuff, that's we'll we'll do that. All right. So let's before we put that light highlight on, just to see. Let's go in and start doing our lighter blue so we can see how much lighter is this going to get. Because this may be value wise in here pretty good. Once we start going lighter, it might start being, you know, too light if we, or dark if we mess with it now. So let's take that lightest blue. And now we're going to start working on kind of the background. Now, if you want the background to be softer, 
you can use your stomp and you can blend. Um, this is what that's going to do if it'll really just kind of work it in and it gets paler. So you could work it in and then kind of go back over it with a color. I like the, the harder edge of the pastel so uh, with the paper showing through, so I'm leaving mine. But this is your artwork. Feel free to use your own artistic license. I'm going to actually take that blue that we did the background with and bring it back kind of the edge over the shadow just a little kind of into the shadow some just to smooth it so it's not quite as bright as bright kind of green and to give me somewhere to kind of work that from. against that shadow, catching just that edge of it. Okay, all right, in a couple places I'm gonna make this darker with that darker blue that we put in first. Mostly by the fruit itself. Just to get rid of a little bit of that kind of orange. I like it scrubbier further out. Notice I'm pulling away from the fruit just so I don't accidentally go into it. All right. Lighter blue now. Okay, so take that lightest blue from the kit. Now this doesn't have to be in a specific way. You're not trying to cover the whole thing. I'm just lightening. Anywhere I want that to be lighter, I'm gonna come in and really push and scrub with that to work it into the, the paper. That's a little harder line than I want against that shadow. So I'm going to try one of those sponge applicators and just see if I just kind of knock the edge of that off. Oh, that's nice. See how that softened that right there? Okay. to be lighter right around this. And a little bit harder line. Okay, now that was pretty ugly earlier. And this is something just like oil painting. And if you're not an oil painter and this is the first time you've done pastels, just be patient with yourself. It goes through these really ugly phases. 
where you put color on and it just looks ugly, it doesn't look right. It's all in the layers. Okay, I want this to be just, turn it to a little harder edge. Now, if I was doing this at home without cameras, I would definitely just turn the work on the board um, so that I could get in with my left hand or I'd be able to get around that side to be able to work with it. But for here, it's okay. I can do the... All right, so it's not quite as light still this is what we've got over there. All right, so what we can do is one of two things. I want that to be a little brighter right here. And, and if you want some harder edges, you can take that edge and draw, okay? See how I'm putting some line in, some scribbly lines? There's nothing saying you can't do that too. Dusty. All right, drink real quick. Getting dusty. All right, good. This seems like the the um as I say that the it gets soft again. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our white and we're gonna start doing highlights on the fruit, and then we'll see if we want to use some of that in the background as well. Um. And you know what? I still don't feel like we've got our darkest dark. So I'm going to take, before I get that white up, I don't like using black, but I think if we put just a little dash. All right, just a tiny dash up top. And a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm going to very carefully try to Trust my right hand to just taking that corner and adding just a little. All right? Now we've got our darkest darks. That's our darkest darks. Okay. So let's put the highlight on that fruit. Now this I want to be a little softer, so I'm just going to kind of I'm working it into that color that's there. But I'm trying to do it where I don't have a hard edge. This would be where be, you could really take that sanding pad and that would help to kind of sand a more rounded edge been kind of dinking with pastels lately so it's I know what angle can start wearing it pretty quick okay. put just a little highlight right up there all right little highlight on the stem there. I'm just barely touching it. Okay. And then there is a highlight coming back down here, but I, I'm remiss to, I, I don't want to put that in yet. I want to leave this. I think we need a little bit more shading. I'm going to take this really sharp, I've got a really sharp edge right here. Just kind of hardening that edge of the fruit just a little bit. I do that up here as well, kind of around the top. Just with a couple little touches. Okay. How are we doing so far, far guys? How are, how are we doing? How's everybody feeling? Do we have people playing along at home doing this? You probably It's probably hard to type and do it at the same time. Uh, so you don't have to feel like you need to to say something. Um, all right, I am going to put a little bit darker 
right in here. See how we can kind of play with that to make it slightly darker. If you squint, you can really see that there is a difference in the two. Okay, and then I think we'll take some white and put it a little bit around here just to kind of frame that pear dust a little bit more. Okay, all right. So we don't really have a super dark red. So I think what I'm going to do is take this one that's kind of that terracotta color. I'm going to grind that in there a little harder and then we'll come back with the red over the top. We'll bring it down into the green because it's going to make that kind of more brown looking. We want to be able to see this kind of volume here that we've got going on. I think getting rid of some of that green on the outer edge will help tone it down a little. Okay. To me that just didn't add enough dark value. What we're going to do is take this, and part of it could be this transition to this. It's a little much. Actually, let's take an orange and kind of tone that down. Hmm. Let's see, that's going to be too light. Very lightly, kind of scribbling. I'm going to kind of go over this brownish red a little bit with that. As I do this, I'm holding it just like this. Just have it between those two fingers, and I'm just I'm pushing the color on, almost like it's a tool, not an actual um, paint, okay, or pigment stick. Just pushing it on that littlest bit. Okay, there, that kind of softened that back in. All right, so now we need to see if we can't get some of that value toned down with the green. Uh, there is an olive green. It's a little darker than, let's do the olive green and come back with the brighter green over it, see if that might not help. Take care of this. gray or I don't feel like it really oh that's nice okay we're gonna use that to kind of drop into that red all right I'm gonna use this and kind of pat that transition between the yellow and the green there so it's not so ridiculously hard okay And I come back in with kind of this forest green. I'm doing little lines, okay? Very gent gentle little lines. Okay starting to look a little better now. And with pastels, you're going to get a facsimile thereof of your item. You're not going to get the exact same color that you've got on, on the item itself. Okay. And it's okay to play with the color and make it different. The pair doesn't have to be this color. If you want, you can make it bright colors you can do all sorts of fun things with it. I'm gonna harden this edge just a little bit. Even though it's not like that in the pear, I think it actually kind of 
helps against that lighter blue. Okay. Now I'm gonna take one of those makeup sponges I'm just patting that green into the red. See, it's making a little bit. All that's doing is softening up some. Okay, I'm gonna take that olive and bring it a little further up here. I think that'll help with that value change. I'm not going to go where the white is because I can feel the paper is really starting to fill. I don't want to have too much in there. Okay. And come back in with just a little pop of red. Oh, that's just too far off. I'd like to. I'm not going to do that though. I kind of like how this is coming out. Okay, so now we're going to take that white and we'll do the shadow or the kind of reflected highlight here. And then we're going to kind of work it into our background. Let me check to see if Katie has given us our winners yet. Yes, so I will get those to you in just a minute. Let's go ahead and kind of finish this up. All right. So our highlight, I want an area that's more rounded. I'm going to wipe the yellow off. All right. I'm going to round that out because that's a little too crunchy, hard-edged. Okay, see how that really made that more three-dimensional? I'm going to come over here with a clean spot on that white, and I'm going to really push that there as well. There we go. All right, so we got a pair that gives us some of the reflected lowlights and highlights of the fruit. Um, I'm going to really like this little green highlight that's right back here, so I'm going to put that back on, because I like that. Okay, alright, so take your white, now that we've kind of gotten it all, get any, wipe any uh, areas off, use your sanded pad if you still have some areas that have a little bit of that darker. See how I just take that, cleaning it so I don't pick up any of that orange to go on the background, all right? And I'm going to decide where I want my lighter lights. Got it on its side, okay.
Okay. Uh, Sue Jones, oil paper may work as a substrate. Glad I just saw that. Um, it's just, it's been treated so that the acid in, it's a little piece of yuck there. Get that, off. that the acid that's in oil paints won't eat into your substrate. Um, the biggest thing is oil paper doesn't have the texture that this type of paper has. So I don't know if it would apply, a, you know, as you'd be able to really employ as many layers on it. Um, but, you know, anything is worth a go if you've got some scrap and you, or you don't mind wasting a piece if it doesn't turn out, who, who cares? Okay, it's all in the experiment. Okay, so I really like that. I'm going to bring that, I kind of like how bright this blue is here though. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is bring a little of this. Sorry, my stomach is growling. There's CV London broil going in the other room. I can smell it. Oh. All right. I really want this to be harder against here. So going in with the right hand. Okay, so I'm going to make this lighter here. We still have to remember that any way we weight this with color, with value, things like that, we don't want to make this suddenly become too heavy. So we may want to come back here and really cement some of this. give it some interest, play with it a little bit, kind of do something that kind of helps with the carrying it across. All right, so voila, a pair. Um, and this shadow could get darker if you wanted. I kind of like it like that. I think it, it I'm, I'm afraid that if making it too dark can start taking away from the pear, which is our center of interest and kind of the the item here. Um, everything else supports the item. Every mark we make supports that item. Um, so you can see that, and this isn't their, you know, absolute, this is, these are, these are small. There's, there's not a lot to them. I still have a pretty good amount of pastels left um, from it. I've broken a few, which that's fine. Um, but, but this will get you through these 12 pages of, of colors or 10, 10, 12 pages of colors. I think it's 12, right? It seemed like it's 12. We kept pulling up more and more and more. Yes. 12 assorted colors. And then you can see what you're, where you want to go from there. And these are a little bit harder than your traditional extra soft pastel, um, which that plays a difference in, in applying that. You have to push a little harder, but in some ways it's nice because you can draw a little more tightly. It's always good to have, if you get into pastels, to have multiple hardnesses, whether from very, you know, hard drier, um, all the way to super extra soft, because there's a place for using those everywhere you go. All right, so let's find out about our winners. And I didn't even use this. This would be where if you just needed to push and lift, um, there's some stuff here where I wanted to, you know, lift something real close in there. I don't want to do it because I like it. Um, I'm just going to lift this extra blue. You push and it lifts right off. Okay. Okay. Or if you're, you know, doing an edge or something and you don't, you don't like it, you, you tr do what Amy did and, and uh, use the wrong hand. Okay. All right. So we've got 
uh, next week. Let's talk about the contest for next week. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me if I turn this. Let's let's try it and see. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We'll see. See what it says when it flips around. I'm scared, <laughs> quite frankly. All right. No, you can't. Okay, we're gonna turn this up. It'll just be easier than me trying to take it off. Okay, there we go. That should work. Talk like, do like this. Okay. Okay, so. Make sure, <laughs> make sure it works. Okay, so this is what we've got for next week. All right. I pushed the wrong thing. You're going to create thanks with, or excuse me, showing appreciation and gratitude for first responders. So that's nurses, that's your EMTs, that's cops, that's anybody that's there in the front line. Okay. So paint, draw, illustrate, however you create art. Do so to express your appreciation for the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, the heroes on the front lines doing everything they can to keep us safe right now. Show your appreciation through art this week. So that is your prompt for this week. And I'm right there. And you can tell that the hairdo, you know, I, I, I need a hairdresser right now. Okay, so these are the winners for this week's, uh, the, the drawing, kind of what you, where you are and what's going on. First place for a $500 Jerry's Artorama e-gift card is Diane Wonderlick of Newburgh, Indiana. And she did pointers, which I think maybe she had to do from memory because pointers never sit still in one place. I've got them, so I know. Um, they're kind of like giving a two-year-old meth and a two-liter of Mountain Dew. So, uh, so Diane, congratulations, $500 e-gift card for you. Then second place, Alicia Garcia of Hialeah, Florida. Um, and then third place is Melody Greenleaf from Sandy, Utah. Okay, and I think uh, Alicia Garcia's was the colored pencil road that's just an empty, like an empty thoroughfare. And it was just really well done. And then Melody had some journal pages that were hilarious about chickens and, and the lack of social distancing. So congratulations, ladies. $500 e-gift card for Diane, $250 for Alicia, and $100 for Melody. Okay? So see what you can do next week, guys. The, the thing, being thankful for your first responders, um, showing your appreciation. I think that that's awesome. Um, and hopefully this helped you learn a little bit about soft pastels. It's not as hard as everybody thinks. It's, it's drawing with color, so it's weird, right? Because you tend to draw with black and white, but look what you can do with it with just a little bit of practice. And I am going to go out there and say, I'm not a pastel artist. I've never had a pastel class. And this is just from monkeying around with color, with practicing layering, from looking through a few books. I am an art book collector. So I tend to kind of look at the pictures and not the descriptions of what to do because I can tell from that application. So this is from somebody who's very untrained in pastels. So just saying that this is something that anybody can pick up very easily and start having some success with 12 sheets of practice and you're going to have some huge successes. Okay, guys. So next week is going to be um, exploring alcohol inks, which should be very fun. Um, it'll be very much more abstract and we'll try some kind of full, cool, fun things from one of my book collections, some, some different projects that I've played with in there. And, uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care. And again, Sundays and Thursdays, we're doing the, uh, the, the pop-ups. And there's pop-ups during the week that aren't live, but I'll be still doing stuff with you guys live Thursdays and Sundays just to kind of get us over this hump of the crazy to, to inspire you and hang out, have a little fun. Okay? We'll see you guys. Take care.